Welcome to the Calyx Garden. I am Thelma and I'm sitting here in our food garden. It's late May, a period, a season we refer to as late spring, even though we don't have winters. Now there's no better site in our food garden in spring than a really healthy crop of sweet corn. We planted our latest crop sometimes in early February and recorded all of the activities from planting all the way through to harvesting. And that's what we're going to be sharing with you in this video. Essentially, it's a step-by-step -step demo of how we grow sweet corn in our garden. Please keep watching. Thanks for staying. So the topic, sweet corn. Why should we grow sweet corn? I know many of you have access to sweet corn anytime you want and relatively inexpensively, but not where I'm from. If you want that fresh, tasty, really nice sweet corn, you essentially have to grow it yourself. The reason why we grow it is it's such a highly nutritious crop. It is a staple in many cultures. It is packed with nutrients such as vitamins, minerals, I'm putting some of that up on the screen, but most importantly, the carbohydrate content is the energy we need to power a lot of our activities. Now, I guess in modern day living, we don't need as much energy because we don't do as much as we, we should be doing physically. But carbohydrates is essential, just don't overdo it. And certainly if you have other issues, such as diabetes, you know you have to take care of your, the amount of carbohydrates you, you consume. Let's now move on to the demonstration. And the activities we recorded are the land preparation, the planting, the growing activities all the way from planting up to 12 weeks, as well as the harvesting. But before I get into that, as usual, let me just give you a bit of background on the likes, the, dis the dislikes, essentially the growing conditions that are preferred by sweet corn. And of course, the first thing you should consider is the ideal location for planting your sweet corn. Sweet corn likes a site that gets at least six hours of sunlight. As you could see, I'm sitting in a very bright location, just soaking up some of that sunlight that corn likes. It also likes rich, free-draining soils, preferably light-textured loams or sandy loams with a pH between 6 and 6.5. Here in the tropics, corn is considered a cool season crop, which means as you avoid planting it in the hotter months. For those of you in temperate climates, you should plant corn as soon as all danger of frost is past, that is, soon after your last frost date. How well your sweet corn tolerates warm conditions depends on the variety. My choice for a sweet corn variety is an older, open-pollinated variety called Pioneer 45. It consistently performs well under my conditions. Once you've selected a location, as well as the variety that is suitable for your conditions, the next step would be, of course, to start preparing the beds. If it's a bed that you've been planting crops in, then the period could be as short as two weeks. And the preparation consists of uh, mixing in another batch of organic matter. You work that in before you plant. This bed is approximately 30 square feet, and we're mixing in two gallons of fully decomposed sheep manure. Other organic sources of nutrients are more nutrient dense, for example, bone meal, fish meal, and poultry manure. So adjust the amounts accordingly if you're using any of these products. Water the bed well after mixing in organic manures and wait two weeks or so before sowing seeds. Of course, I strongly recommend using organic sources of fertilizer whenever available as not only do they feed the plant, they also help to build and maintain soil health. Now, if you're in a situation where you really have no choice but to use conventional granular fertilizers, I'm going to put up recommended rates or suggested rates for two of the more popular formulations. These are intended to be used just as guidance. It's always best to get specific recommendations for your crop, 
your soil type, and other conditions in the area that you're working in. Once the bed is fully prepared and you've applied the fertilizer prior to planting, it's time to sow the seeds in the bed and that's what I'm going to show you now. This bed is approximately three feet wide and 10 feet long. And in it, I hope to have approximately 40 plants. Now, what I'm doing first or what needs to be done first is essentially make the holes. And this is the world's largest dibble stick, but convenient, I don't have to keep bending. I'm making the holes eight to 12 inches apart. Corn needs to be planted densely to aid in pollination. Also, for the purpose of pollination, try to have at least 20 plants growing closely together in a bed. Less than this may result in poor pollination and fewer kernels on your corn cobs. I'm going to be placing two seeds in each depression, but I'm not putting the seeds right on top of each other. I'm ensuring there is a space of at least between two or three inches. Now, why I'm placing, leaving a space between two seeds is that you really don't want to have your seeds, your plants coming up right next to each other because take a look at these two old corn plants I just dug up and you see the, the size of the root ball. Now these are very vigorous roots. The corn needs them to extract all the water and the nutrients. So if they were growing right next to each other, you would see that there was, would be a fair, fair amount of competition to, between these two plants. So I'll just continue planting the remainder of the holes. I'll cover the seeds with about one inch of soil and tap them in place so that when we water immediately after sowing, the seeds do not get dislodged. Now we expect these seeds to germinate within five to seven days, at which point we'll thin out any extra seedlings. Here are the young plants at two and a half weeks after sowing. They've been thin to the desired spacing of 8 to 10 or 12 inches apart, and we've also mulched them to conserve moisture. At five weeks after planting, we mix the second application of fertilizer into the top two inches of the soil and made small mounds around the stems of the plants. This is also called molding. Notice that the bed is weed free. The plants are now entering their rapid phase of growth, so, maintaining a consistent supply of moisture is even more important. Water when the top two to three inches of soil feels dry to the touch. Monitor the corn bed as well as the surrounding beds for pests. The main pests of concern are cutworms, corn airworms, and armyworms. If there are only a few of these pests, you may remove them physically. But if there are lots of them, a relatively safe organic option is a, any product containing Bt and you apply this every five to seven days until you get the problem under control. You've provided the corn plants with all that they need in order to grow well during their vegetative phase and before too long they've entered their reproductive phase. The variety that we're growing, the Pioneer 45, starts to flag, which means sends out an uh, indicator leaf that they're entering their reproductive phase somewhere about nine weeks after planting. Soon afterwards, the tassels that produce the pollen and the baby corns bearing the silk filaments emerge. Pollination occurs when the pollen from the tassel falls on the silk. Each filament is connected to a single kernel of corn and if a filament does not receive pollen, the kernel fails to develop. And that's, when that happens, you see a lot of gaps on your corn cob. So pay attention to the color of the silks as it is the best indicator of when corn should be reaped. Filaments start out a pale golden color and over a period of two to three weeks, they gradually deepen to dark brown. If you wish to know if the kernels are mature, you could check a few ears of corn that have dark brown filaments. And if their kernels are plump and golden, it's time to reap. And if the kernels are white and not filled out, 
wait a few more days. Here are the plants at 12 weeks. Most of the ears have brown silks, but there are some with lighter silks. A quick peek at this one confirmed that we should wait a few more days, and that's what we did. Here is done reaping both beds at about 12 and a half weeks. Now this variety tends to give one ear of corn per stalk, so we ended up with close to 60 ears of corn. Not bad. Here's a sample that shows that the majority of ears were picked at the right stage. To preserve the fresh picked flavor for weeks, cut the corns into serving size portions, place them in airtight freezer bags, and keep them in the freezer until you need them. And the last step in this process is to clear the field to make way for the next crop. But keep the cane stalks, chop them up into smaller segments as soon as you can because they make excellent mulch. We've come to the end of another excellent corn crop and I hope I've convinced you how easy it is to grow sweet corn in your garden. Just start with a minimum 20 plants or so in your bed, the more the merrier of course. Make sure that the soil is well drained and fertile. You augment it with organic matter. Keep the water, do not allow the plant to go under any water stress, especially in the area, in the time leading up to the emergence of flowers. Now, the other key tip of course, is to make sure that you pick your corn at peak maturity and we showed you how to test for that. If you need more information on growing corn, as well as 49 other crops in the tropics, please check our book on crop production and harvesting, which is available on Amazon Kindle and bookfusion.com. If you like this video, we're going to ask you please to give us a thumbs up and drop us a line, make a comment, ask a question. We appreciate that and we look forward to your feedback. If you haven't subscribed already, we're asking you please to do so. That way you will not miss any of the videos that we upload. And the more often you visit our site, the more likely you are to watch the other videos that we have there. So until the next video, I'm Thelma sitting here amongst the end of the corn crop saying thanks for watching. Take care and bye bye.